Whenever I see flowers, they bring me a sense of peace and happiness. In today's video, we will draw five different flowers step by step. We will use both chill tip and brush tip markers. Thank you to each one of you who shared your favorite flowers to draw on my previous post. Your comments and likes mean a lot to me. Let's dive in and have some fun drawing these beautiful flowers. Drop a comment and let me know which one is your favorite. In this video, I will be using markers from Ohuhu Pastel Set and Mitong Set. Special thanks to Ohuhu for sending me these markers and sponsoring today's video. You can find our supply link in the description box below. I have always wanted to try Ohuhu Pastel Colors to create some drawings. For each flower, you will need around 4 marker colors. But remember, some of the colors are optional. You don't need a huge collection of markers to follow along with this video. When we don't have many markers, we can focus on controlling the speed and pressure to create a range of light to dark values to help create depth for our drawing. Oh there, are you all set with your art supplies? Before we begin, don't forget to grab a cup of nice tea. It's a perfect companion for our relaxing and creative drawing session. Let's get ready to draw some stunning tulips together. Tulip is one of the most popular requests from my last post. If you are keen on learning how to draw without reference, thumbnail sketch is a great way to practice. The way we arrange the flowers plays a significant role in our drawings. I wasn't quite sure how I wanted this set of tulips to look. Doing thumbnail sketches is super helpful. It's a great way to explore the ideas bouncing around in my head. A couple of tulips seems a bit too symmetrical, while drawing three tulips would have taken more time. So I thought why not draw a couple of tulips with one small bud by the side. One easy way to draw tulips is to draw the side view. Start by drawing the large petals first, then gradually add a few more layers around it. To add depth, draw some small curves for the petals behind it. There are many ways to simplify the shape of a flower to guide us when drawing. One effective method is to sketch straight lines first before adding curved lines. This technique has been my go-to since I started learning how to draw. The shape of the tulip is simple, but how we perceive it may not transfer very well on the paper when we draw. So for beginners, using a few guidelines to draw can be very helpful. The outline serves as a foundation of our drawing, so before diving to coloring, I like to spend extra time refining the outline. I made the tulip on the right side smaller to create an asymmetrical look. It's similar to the art of flower arrangement, where the placement and the grouping of the flower can drastically alter the overall feeling of the bouquet. So take your time with the outline. Once the outline is finished, my next step is to refine the details.
Now let's erase the pencil outline. Then we can use a yellow marker to slightly trace it before coloring. You can take a picture of your drawing right now, just in case after you erase your pencil outline, you forget the small details you have sketched out. I choose a yellow color that will blend in later. In my other drawings, I usually use a pen to do the line work first. But in this video, I would like to try out a different style to see how it looks. Now let's fill in colors. For the flowers on the left side, I will demonstrate the chill tip. I will use brush tip for the ones on the right side. So no matter what markers you have, I got you covered. I choose the light source from the left, and I want the center part of each petal to be lighter. So I will draw from the top or bottom of the petal towards the center and lift my markers so the center part will have the lightest color. When you don't have many colors of markers, it's better to begin by applying light pressure and maintain a relatively fast speed for each stroke. This will help create a lighter shade of your marker. Then you can gradually layer more ink to darken certain areas. For the two lips, I will mainly use two pink colors for the shading. The additional pink hues that you might notice are optional, and I use them to help enrich the colors. At the petal's edge, I will move my marker from the outer side towards the center. The difference between using a chisel tip or a brush tip is not significant here. I often receive questions about brush tip techniques on my chisel tip tutorials. And the same goes for my brush tip tutorials. So I decided to use both nibs to draw the same flower in this video. This way I can offer insights into both techniques and help you get the best result. Especially in my how to draw eyes tutorials, what I have learned is that controlling the speed and pressure is one of the keys to using both sides of the marker. It does take some practice for me, I still prefer the chill tips more than the brush tip. Let's take a closer look at pictures of tulip petals. We can observe their unique texture. To create the texture here, I use the chill tips edge to create hatching lines. It's interesting how chill tips can handle even the finer details. I choose a yellow-green color for the stems. It makes the tulip's pink color pop more vibrantly. Whenever I work on any part of the flower, I make sure to consider the lighting. Given that the light source is coming from the upper left, the left side of each element will appear slightly darker than the right side. However, shading the leaves can be a little bit tricky due to their curved shapes and the way how they interact with the bouncing light. If you are finding a bit complicated, I suggest looking at some reference photos. The reference photos can help you better understand how the light and shadow interact on the leaves. Remember, you don't have to replicate every details you see. Choose what stands out to you and what best suits your artistic vision.
We can use a color pencil to clarify some details. It is optional. I usually focus on enhancing some of the edges, which makes each petal layer stand out. For the leaves, use a darker green color pencil to sharpen the edges. It really tied up the drawing together. It's like the final puzzle piece that makes the whole drawing look unified. In this drawing, we have only used pastel and mid-tone colors. We haven't brought in really dark shades. However, we have kept the light areas very bright. There is already a noticeable contrast between the light and dark values. This contrast helps add depth to our drawing. I really liked the color combination I used in this drawing. If you don't have the exact same colors as I do, don't worry. Feel free to experiment with different colors you have. You might stumble upon something even better. It's all about exploring and finding the right combo that clicks with your style and what you envision. Enjoying the process of creating your own unique color scheme. Together, we have drawn these beautiful tulips. Remember, we are on this creative journey together, always learning and growing. So as we finish up this drawing, let's take a moment to feel proud of what we have accomplished. Also, remember to take breaks and rest. Your creativity flows better when you are feeling refreshed and recharged. The beauty of Forget-Me-Not lies in its simplicity. Drawing this flower is quite straightforward. It's all about those rounded, cute petals that bring joy to our canvas. To add a touch of depth, we can draw some flowers with a slightly oval shape instead of perfect circles.
I am using a light blue color to outline each petal. Next, we will take a yellow marker and color the center of the flower first. Just draw a few dots. Now grab a light blue marker and let's fill in some colors on each petal. When working on smaller flowers like this, the brush tip comes in handy. I begin from the petal's edge and move towards the center, leaving some white space around the center. This is because the area around the flower center usually has some white elements. By doing this, I can prevent the blue color from covering the yellow too much. Now switching to a different shade of blue, we will repeat the previous steps to build up layers of colors. On petals where they overlap, we can add a slightly darker tone. This helps create a subtle shadow effect and adds depth to the flower. Just like in the previous drawing, we can use a cup of colored pencil 
to refine the edges of the flower and the stems. This step is optional. If you happen to have dark color marker, you can use them instead of using the color pencil. Lastly, using white paint to draw in a few extra details. Working on some drawing like this one sparks our motivation to keep drawing. Sunflower is one of the most popular requests. We will be drawing two of them together. I will use a chill tip for the one on the left and use a brush tip for the one on the right. I recommend you pick just one to follow along. In this way, it's easy to finish and you can always draw more after you feel more comfortable with it. When we look at the flower from a bit of side angle, it appears more oval than perfectly round. Some petals may look shorter. We can follow the oval shape to draw the flowers with a sense of depth. When you are drawing flowers from a side angle instead of the front view, we need to consider using the foreshortening technique. In this case, the petals on the left and right side will appear slightly shorter.
The sunflower has a few layers of petals. Let's make them overlap to build the layers. Remember, each petal should look a bit different, which actually makes it easier to draw. We don't need them to be perfect. The shape of the first flower is relatively flat. Now, I'd like to draw a sunflower that has a more of a cone shape to it. Before moving on, let's clean up the outline as much as possible. When it comes to drawing leaves, I wasn't sure how to do it at first. So I just went ahead and sketched out different ideas to see which one would look the best. A lot of times, you gotta try things out to see what works best. Just like in the previous drawings, we will start by using a light color for outlining after we have erased the pencil sketch. Start with a gentle, sunny yellow shade to fill in the color of each petal. On some edges, I will intentionally leave some white space to be part of the highlight. After that, switch to a slightly darker yellow to add some depth. If you take a look at some reference photos, you will notice that the area around the flower's center tends to be darker. This is because the bottom of each petal curls up creating small shadows. To show this, I will draw thin strokes starting from the center and moving outward. This is not only adds color, 
but also creates a texture on the petals. For the seeds in the middle of the sunflower, we can use warm brown colors. Right at the center, there are some seeds that haven't fully opened yet. They are lower than the outer ring, so we will make them darker to make them appear that they are deeper in. Now use a third shade of yellow to enhance some of the shadow. If you don't have the third shade of yellow, you can use color pencils. We are using three shades, light tone, mid tone, and dark tone, to give the drawing more depth. When two petals overlap, there is a bit of shade on the petal underneath, so I will make some edges a bit darker to show the shadow. We are going to follow the same steps for the other sunflower. This time, I will be using the brush tip. If you are not sure where to add darker shades, don't worry or stress. Feeling a bit lost is perfectly normal. As I was coloring these sunflowers, their bright and lively colors made me think of a dress I had when I was a kid. That dress was covered in beautiful sunflower print. It's heartwarming that how coloring these flowers brought back some lovely memories of the sudden.
I decided to make the petals in the upper area slightly darker. This is because I thought this part could be a little covered by the leaves, which could block some sunlight. Remember, you have full control over the details. You can draw what you see, and even what you imagine. I'm going to use the same green colors we have used before for the leaves in our previous drawings. I won't worry too much about the tiny details. Instead, I will keep it simple and follow the basic rule. Leaves that are facing the light appear lighter in color. I'm just sketching in a few veins on this leaf right here. For all the leaves, our mind will naturally fill in the rest of the details. The stems right beneath the flower can be darker since the sunflower cast a shadow on them.
the drawing is coming together nicely so far. However, I feel there is something missing. We have mainly used pastel and mid-tone colors. No dark shades have been added yet. To really make the drawing pop, let's bring some dark colors. Making the sunflower's petal look more radiant and golden can be achieved by deepening the color of the seeds, creating a beautiful contrast with the bright yellow. I often get a little nervous when it comes to using dark colors. But remember, don't be afraid to make mistakes. The excitement of exploring the unknown is all part of the fun in our drawing process. I'm using a darker green shade from a different set of Ohuhu markers. If you don't have a darker green, try a color pencil or a dark brown color. You will notice the drawing has really come to life right now. As you probably guessed, the final touch is to use a white gel pen to add some highlights. Now let's refine a few details. In general, the coloring process is not complicated. I find the trickiest part is creating the outline. Unlike watercolors and gouache, with markers, we don't usually mix many colors on one brush. That's why I intentionally used a touch of purple here to add a cooler tone to the shadows. This makes our color more dynamic. Hopefully, this set of sunflowers bring a bit of joy to you. How about we take a break and pamper ourselves with a soothing cup of tea or coffee? Join me later as we dive into drawing lilies. In this chapter, let's draw a set of lilies. Since I wasn't quite fond of the composition I did in the last drawing, I decided to draw one stem with flowers on extended branches. I think drawing lilies is easier than sunflowers because it has fewer petals. To begin, let's sketch an oval as a guideline.
first draw a center line for each petal. These lines will help you determine the direction and the length of each petal. As we mentioned in the last drawing, the petals that extend towards the viewer will look a bit shortened due to perspective. If you are finding a bit tricky to grasp a petal's shape from a specific angle, you can search for reference photos and isolate the petal to trace its silhouette. This technique helps me better see its actual shape. I would like to draw petals with wavy shapes. To achieve this, I will add more curvatures to the edges. When it comes to sketching leaves, avoid making them symmetrical. Let's embrace the natural and organic forms in the nature. Roughly trace the outline with a color you like. I will use a set of blue markers to color this drawing. No green leaves, just using analog colors. You can do any other colors you like.
will color the pollen first, so we don't forget it later. Same with the last drawing, I will draw from the center towards out. The center area have more shadows. Looking at this drawing, I noticed I used many tiny strokes. While I was practicing, I actually used more wide strokes, which gave the drawing a more cohesive appearance. You can choose whichever style you prefer. Let's switch to a darker color to add more depths. One of the brightest part is where the petal curves. I realized I might not have kept enough white space for the petals. We can use white gel pen to fix it later. For the tip of a few petals, I will make them darker. It will suggest the area is bended away from the light. It's important to not allocate the same amount of white space for all the petals. Each petal catches light differently. We can add darker colors to hint at lighting, but no need to be overly precise.
using a dark blue color pencil to sharpen edges and introduce some texture to the petals. Throughout this process, our aim is to create a noticeable difference between light and dark areas. The left side flower is our main focus, and I will be adding more details to it. Just like in the previous drawing, we don't need to add many details to the leaves. Of course, you can choose to add as many details as you like. Personally, I prefer to keep things simple and minimalist whenever possible. I used to enjoy drawing in a more realistic style. But over time, my artistic preference have shifted. A few years ago, I was really into digital drawing. Now I have returned to a more traditional approach and want to spend more time drawing in sketchbooks. Congratulations on completing the lily drawing journey with me. I'm very proud of you for following along and bringing your creativity to life. Welcome to the final chapter of this video. Thank you so much for sticking around and draw alongside me. I hope you have been enjoying our creative journey together. Before we continue, make sure to take a moment to stretch and stay hydrated. Now let's dive into drawing a set of wonderfully simple peonies. This one is a breeze, no complex sketching required, making it the easiest flower we have tackled so far. I'm going to place these peonies in a glass. Decide on the number of peonies you want to draw. And let's begin by sketching circles to position them. We will surround them with some leaves, just a few because we want to keep the drawing uncluttered.
In this drawing, I would recommend using the trail tip markers over the brush tip. From my experience, for this illustration, the trail tip is more easier to use. When working on petals, follow the direction of the circles I have highlighted here. Just press down and lift the marker. This method lets you create strokes that naturally transition from light to dark. Each stroke becomes a petal of the peony. And don't forget the tips of the petals usually appear lighter, so leave some white space. For the peony that shows the side view more, use small strokes on the top part of the flower to show lots of layers of petals. On the front, we will focus on coloring two big petals. It might surprise you, but with only one pink marker, you can make the petals look like they have different layers and depths. Wait a bit for the first layer of ink to dry. This helps the paper soak up more ink later. Using the same pink marker, we can layer more ink to enhance the darker tones. Simply go over a few petals like this. Now let's deepen the shadows on the leaves. Focus on adding darker tones to the bottom part of each leaf. When you are sketching the stem in the water, try to slightly shift its position. Drawing a half full glass of water can be quite simple. We can use a gray marker to slightly outline the glass's edge. Color in the oval shape to represent the water's surface. Darken the bottom of the glass slightly. Leave the rest of the water area blank for now.
switch to a different shade of pink to create a gradient effect on some of the petals. This adds more dynamic colors. Grab a color pencil to add some veins on the leaves. Around the center of the peonies, use a dark pink color pencil to define edges and create the darkest shadow. I have included reference photo to help you understand why I added those dark lines in the specific areas. To wrap things up, grab your white paint or white gel pen to add some highlights on the flowers, leaves, and a few touch on the glass. Congratulations, you have successfully drawn a beautiful set of peonies. Simple but impressive. I really hope you had fun drawing along and picked up some useful tips from this tutorial. I'm really glad to be part of your journey. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I will see you in the next video.